Hello, this is Allie with The Perception Trainers, author of The Perception Diet, and today I want to talk to you about why you do not need to fight your bad eating habits. Why you need to stop fighting your bad eating habits. And so a few weeks ago I made a video called Why You Need to Give Up All Diet Rules. And essentially in that video I told you that when you tell your brain that I can't have this, I can't do this, I can't eat this anymore, I can't do this anymore, blah blah, your brain goes into fight or flight mode. And when your brain is in fight or flight mode, it's in fear mode, right? And it's in survival mode. And whenever we put our brain in survival mode, our brain does not understand that there is plenty of food, okay? Our brain does not understand that just because you're saying I can't have cookies, there's apples and bananas and all these things that I can eat, right? Your brain hears there's famine, which means I am in I am in threat of dying, I am at risk of dying, and therefore I must eat everything, right? To protect myself from death. Because every threat to your brain stand is a physical threat, whether it's actually a physical threat or not, whether it's an emotional threat, a, a psychological threat, um, a mental threat, doesn't matter. Your brain hears threat, your brain hears we are physically under attack and we need to do whatever it takes to survive, okay? So that's why letting go of those rules and saying, okay, I'm allowed to do whatever I want, I'm allowed to eat whatever I want, I'm allowed to have as much as I want, um, what do I want? What serves my highest value? What serves my highest good? What serves who I want to become? Knowing that I can choose the cookies if I want to, I, the cookies are always going to be there, what do I want to do, right? So this idea is, is kind of like the foundation for what I want to talk about today. So today I want to share with you a little bit of my journey and how I got to this place where I have relative peace with food. And I say relative because I believe that, you know, life is a progression. It's not, it's not a journey to an end goal that you get to. And I, I know that my journey is not over because I'm still alive. Um, but I am far more at peace with food now than I ever have been in my entire life. Like literally, I think my entire life. So I want to share with you a little bit of my journey because I feel like it will probably resonate with a lot of you out there because, you know, I'm not special. I am just like you. I'm just like everyone else out there. And I had the same kind of mental attitudes. I had the same kind of habits. And I know that if I was able to help myself, that this information will probably help you too, okay? So to kind of rewind, back in the day when I was uh, in grade nine, I went on my first diet. And I went on my first diet in grade nine because during grade eight, so when I was 14, 13, 14, I essentially spent the entire year on the couch eating. I was um, really just traumatized at that point by life. A lot of things had kind of happened and I just, I had no tools for dealing with my emotions. I had no tools for dealing with uh, my, my thoughts, anything like that. So I, I essentially spent an entire year sitting on the couch eating. Like I didn't go, like I barely went to school. Like I went to school just enough days that they didn't make me do grade eight again. Um, and so in grade nine, I realized, hey, I'm, I'm fat, <laughs> like I've gained weight, this is not okay. And, and I, I say that sort of jokingly, but you know, at the time it was horrifying for me. I was, I was really, really, really not okay with the fact that I had gained weight and, and my body was becoming a woman and all this stuff, and it, I, was, I was horrified, really. And so the summer between grade eight and grade nine, I decided I'm going on my first diet. I, I'm gonna do this this high carb low pro, or high protein low carb situation, and this started me on essentially what would become like a ten year battle, a, an eight year cycle of just craziness of fighting my food habits. Right. So for the first several years of my dieting career. I was, I was constantly on some sort of diet, so on some sort of program, so low, low carb, high protein, or on like the blood type diet, or on, you know, I, I did kind of pretty much every diet under the sun. And really what it was, really what happened was I would be in this cycle of having, like being so disgusted with my body, being so disgusted with my habits, being so upset with myself for how I was, so that would, you know, kick me over into starting a diet. 
So that would mean I'm fighting my food cravings, so fighting my cravings to eat, you know, bread, and fighting my cravings to eat cheese, and fighting my cravings to eat pasta, and fighting my cravings to eat all these things. So fight, 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 and then eventually lose that fight, right? Because willpower only lasts so long. And, you know, of course, I'm activating my brainstem every time I tell myself I can't have something. I don't know this at the time, and I'm activating my brainstem. Panic takes over. And then I would go into these kind of... I, personally, would have these these very out of control binge cycles. So I, I remember very vividly one time uh, after starving myself for a week, I, um, and I wasn't really starving myself, like I was definitely eating adequate calories at that point, just again, right, very specific, very like meat and eggs and vegetables. And so I would, I would starve myself, right, because to my brain it was starvation. And I remember standing at the kitchen counter eating like half a loaf of banana bread with a fork. Just like in this like numb, I don't like, you know, you're not, you don't even, I, de I remember not even really feeling in control. Like I wasn't really even tasting it. I wasn't really even like present for the experience. I was just eating and eating and eating. And then it's like I've eaten half the loaf and I would like come to and be like, oh my god, I can't believe I just did this. And I remember like running to my basement and just like crying and just thinking like I'm so out of control. What is wrong with me? Like how am I ever going to be skinny? How am I ever going to be fit? How am I ever going to be this person that I want to be if I keep doing this? And I was so mad at myself. And I was beating myself up and I was like, okay, I'm never going to do that again. Like I'm never going to do that again. And then right, so that restarts the resolve and then you fight it for a little bit and then like literally a couple of days later, I'd end up doing the same thing. I'd always end up in these kind of like weird, bingy, like sitting, like I remember another time I had made like rice pudding and I, I was, I had some for breakfast and then I was just sitting there and I was just like picking at it and picking at it and picking at it. My dad was like, what are you doing? Like, what, Ali, like, t stop it. Like, take a bowl of it or something. And I was like, no, no, like, again, like, holy smokes, I shouldn't be eating this, I shouldn't be having this much bowl of and so I was just for like the next two or three years fighting my urge to eat. And it was like my urge to eat just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. The more I tried to fight it, the more intense it became. And then as I ventured into eating disorder, all of a sudden it became like I got really good at fighting my appetite and I got really good at fighting all that stuff. But again, food was a continual battle. Like in the middle of anorexia, food is just quite literally your best friend and your worst enemy all at the same time. So it's, again, it's a, a constant battle. It's that constant battle between I want to eat, I want to eat, I want to eat, and I don't want to eat, I want to be skinny. And thinking, you know, you kind of flip-flop between, you know, I really should be eating because I'm going to die, and then, but I don't want to eat because I want to be skinny, blah, blah, blah. And then coming into recovery, uh, then I just spent a whole bunch of years fighting my anorexic tendencies, right? So fighting the urge to to restrict, fighting the urge to weigh myself, fighting the urge to, be, to you know, pinch my fat and look at myself in the mirror 45,000 times a day and make people talk to me about how my weight was and da da So it was just fight, 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 fight. And I kind of, I got to this place where I realized like, holy crap, like I've been from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. And then after I recovered, then I kind of started getting back into the binge stuff again, right? Where, like, I don't know that anyone would necessarily call what I did an actual binge, but, like, again, it's just that, like, sitting there, like, picking at the food, like, zoning out, and just picking and picking and picking and picking, that became my new thing. And again, I would fight it. i try to fight it, try to fight it, try to fight it, and lose every time. I always ended up going back to doing it. And so, like I say, I realized at some point that I, I'm like, okay, my relationship with food is just one big fight. It's just a battle. Every single, like, several times a day, I'm going to war. And it's no wonder that I can't make peace with my food. It's no wonder that I can't make peace with my body. It's no wonder that I can't sit down to a meal and enjoy something. Because it's a fight. It's now, it's a fight every time. It's, I'm either fighting what I want, or I'm, I'm fighting to, to do this thing that I don't really want to do, but I think is going to make me skinny, or I'm fighting you know, I'm fighting my anorexic tendencies, I'm fighting my urge to just sit there and numb out, I'm, I'm fighting, 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 and so even when I am eating something that I think, okay, I've made this meal and it's in alignment with my ideals and I, like, I'm doing this perfect thing, I'm not even present, I'm not even there, I'm totally checked out, it's almost like, 
I, I'm present while I'm making my food, I'm present while I'm there, I go to sit down and then I'm gone. Because it was a battle. My brain was so trained at that point that food was a fight that it wasn't pleasurable. It couldn't be pleasurable. I couldn't be there. And it was so unhealthy, right? And it was just, I got to this point where I was like, look, if, if food is just gonna be this big fight for the rest of my life, like, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna be in a battle with my food for the rest of my life. And so I hope first that if you identify with this at all, like if you identify with food being a battle for you, even like fighting your urge to eat, fighting your urge to eat the foods that you don't want to eat, fighting your like fighting to try and be a vegan, fighting to try and be a vegetarian, fighting to try and be a raw foodist, fighting to try and be skinny, fighting to try and be this or that, or you're on the other side of the spectrum and you're trying to fight your eating disorder, you're trying to fight your urges to do these things. I just want to first say that I'm telling you from personal experience, the battle only begets more battle, okay? The longer you fight, the longer you're gonna fight. And I know that to, to consider giving up the battle, whether it's giving up the battle of like fighting being overweight and fighting your overeating tendencies or going on the other side, fighting your eating disorder, fighting, fighting being too thin, fighting whatever, sounds really scary because you feel like if you're saying I'm going to stop fighting, I'm giving up the fight and I'm just going to be this way forever. And I just want to say that I get that, okay? I understand that view. But first and foremost, I just want you to consider how has the fighting been working? Has the fighting ever worked? And if you're still in the battle, then you know that fighting doesn't work and, and that being in this battle isn't the answer, right? To fight your negative habits is not what's going to get you to where you want to be, right? So what do you do? What, is, what are my steps? So I'm going to tell you what I did, and this worked. And I'm going to tell you what I tell the people that I get to work one-on-one -on -one with, because it is the exact opposite thing that we most always do, and that's why I say it's just crazy enough to work. So the first thing that I did was I just gave myself permission to stop fighting. Okay, so at this point it was like I, I, I had recovered from my eating disorder weight-wise, but I was still mentally completely in turmoil. And so instead of trying to fight the eating disorder stuff, so trying to fight the binging and the, the like going to food to just zone out and trying to fight my urges to eat foods that I thought weren't in alignment with what would make me skinny and what would make me healthy and what would make me at my ideal body, um, I just said, okay, first things first, it's okay that I do this. It's okay if I want to sit there and pick up food. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not going to make that off limits anymore. I'm allowed to do it. I'm not going to fight it, okay? Second thing, I'm not going to fight my urge to eat the foods that maybe aren't in alignment with this perfect diet that I think that I should be eating in order to be healthy, right? So I just said, it's okay. I'm allowed to have whatever I want. So at first, that meant eating some foods that were fear foods for me, right? Like including some things into my diet that I hadn't let myself have in a long time. For instance, salt. I was like a freaking afraid of salt. And, but of course I wanted to eat it. I wanted to eat things that had salt on them. I wanted to eat these things and I'd been fighting it for so long and I was just like, you know what? I'm giving up this battle. I'm not gonna fight it. If I truly want to eat something salty, I'm allowed. But I have to be present. I have to be there, I have to see if I enjoy it, and I have to really be like seeing how it actually affects my body. And for me, it turned out that my body really reacted well. Like, my body was wise, my body knew what it was asking me for. I ate miso soup and it like changed everything. <laughs> like, but I all of a sudden wasn't dehydrated all the time, and all of a sudden, like, like literally, it just totally transformed my health. In, in a way that I thought would be the opposite of that, right? So what I'm saying is, first things first, is you just make it okay that you do, that you do what you do. You just say, I'm gonna stop fighting. I'm not gonna fight this. I'm not gonna fight this, right? I am okay. It is okay. These habits are okay. This is not a big disaster. This is not something I have to try to beat myself out of. I'm not gonna berate myself or beat myself up any single t anymore for what I do my behaviors, right? So if I would sit there and pick up food, I'd say, okay, I'm allowed to do this. I'm fully, right? So the thing is, I'm allowed to do it, but I have to be present, right? I have to show up, no guilt, and just say, this is what I'm choosing to do. 
and I'm just going to be here while I do it, right? So then all of a sudden, the sitting there and picking at food, I was like, well, this isn't giving me what I want anymore, right? Like this is not letting me check out. And in doing that, right, so in making it okay, and then in asking myself to be present, I realized that what I really wanted was something to help me just like relieve the pressure of my life. Like I was just feeling so overwhelmed by everything that I was turning to this, you know, binge picking thing because it was the only thing that I had in my life that let me just like relax and not think about anything. And so I was thinking, well, okay, if, if that's really what I want, maybe I need to just introduce some other things into my life that let me rest and relax. And as I started doing that, all of a sudden my urge to do the sit there and pick at food all day just went away. I didn't have to fight it. I don't fight that now. It's not like I don't do it because I'm like fighting my urge to do it every day. And I'm telling you, like this was like an addiction. This was something I did like on a daily basis. There was a there was times where I would go pick, like I would go sneak into the kitchen, get something out of somewhere, and pick at it. Like just pick and pick and pick for like 20 minutes. And like this was something that I did for years. And and I fought it and fought it and fought it. And then when I finally just made it okay, I just said, okay, it is okay. I just have to be present. I showed up and then I realized what I actually needed. And then I could actually give myself something else in my life to fill that need that was more positive. So you see what I'm saying? When you stop fighting, you make it okay what you're doing, and then you just make the rule that you just have to be present. You have to be there with yourself. You're not allowed to check out. You have to be there. You will realize why you're doing what you're doing. And you will be able to figure out new and better, more positive ways of getting that need met. That's all that's happening. Because again, your negative eating habits are not negative, right? They are meeting a need of some sort. And if you don't know what that need is, if you really don't know, if you don't have something else that you can try that's a little bit more positive, then you haven't been present and you haven't made it okay. And this is why I say it's crazy enough to work, right? So instead of fighting your stuff, any negative eating habits that you have, any negative health habits that you have, number one, stop fighting. Make it okay. It's okay. Own it, okay? I eat cheese even though it really makes me, like it hurts my stomach every time, right? I, I want to be vegan but I keep falling back to, yeah, cheese, pizza. Or um, I really want to work out but every single time I say I'm going to, I think of something else. I come up with something else that I'm going to do, whatever. Own it. It's okay that I do this thing. Second thing, next time you engage in an activity, just be present, okay? Oh, like approvingly present. This is what I'm doing. I know I'm going to do it. I'm not going to fight. I'm not telling myself I can't do this. I'm telling myself that I can't. Sometimes you just won't want to do it. Sometimes you say, I can do it, and then you just won't. Other times you will do it, and when you're present, you will realize, okay, this is what I want out of this. This is what I'm getting out of this. Is there a better way? to meet this need, all right? So stop fighting your food stuff. It won't work, you'll never get there. It's because you need to realize why you're doing what you're doing. And the only way to realize why you're doing what you're doing is to be present, make it okay, and figure out what need is getting met. And then you can start to meet that need in another way and then you never have to fight your old habits again. You never have to fight them. They will just go away naturally because you get the need met in another way, in a more positive way in a way that actually serves. All right? So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Um, like, subscribe. If you want to follow me on Facebook, we're Perception Trainers. Follow me on Instagram. I'm Ali underscore Perception Trainers. Um, contact me through email, anything you like. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.